One of the axioms that I live by, in times of steadiness, preach a message of turbulence. In times of turbulence, preach a message of steadiness. We are in a time of economic and cultural upheaval, as the neoliberal system that we live under is undergoing an intersectional makeover, while simultaneously monopolizing land and resources in the name of hedging their materialistic losses due to projected climate catastrophe. We are on the verge of a housing cliff as the eviction bans will be lifted next month with millions of people behind in rent who could be on the verge of eviction. We are entering into, a, into the post-COVID era leaving us with more questions than answers. Careers and lives were destroyed in the name of public health. Main Street has been entirely put under the thumbs of Wall Street and Silicon Valley, with the right mistakenly believing that this is China behind all of this. Um, middle America, perceived by progressives and liberals to be woefully behind the times, is being forced to adapt to this brave new world on their terms, whether they like it or not. And in the wake of all of this, there is talk of a new normal. And while liberals and progressives may be well intended in their grand social designs for creating a new normal, that is dictated per the terms of the upper levels of capital. To average non-ideological types and conservatives, this is very alienating and very disturbing. If the American left does not learn to divorce themselves from the liberal establishment, which has dictated the leftist narrative since 2016, new normalism will create a cultural and political backlash that will be far worse than even Trumpism was. To the average person, when they hear the term new normal, to them it means I'm not going to get my job back, my business, or my standard of living that I had before the pandemic. I'm not going to be a homeowner again. I'm not going to be able to live the life I lived before my life was turned upside down in the name of public safety. Progressives seem to not make this, you know, connection that... In the wake of all the media's panic-inducing COVID fatality numbers up in the 600,000 range with some 33 million people infected, there were some 40 million people dislocated from their careers. I was one of them. 20 million people dislocated from their living arrangements. I was one of them. And 200,000 small business closures. Well... The upper levels of capital have made more money in 2020 alone than they did in the past 18 years combined. Society, for the most part, at the urging of liberals, was forced to close down, forced to mask up, forced to stay apart, and forced to weather the storm with band-aid measures to patch up the entry point that was the uh, bullet of COVID mitigation measures, but not the exit wound. Liberals will pat themselves on the back and say, look, we got rid of Trump. Look, we gave you Band-Aids. Look how great we are. If you question our greatness, you're a conspiracy theorist or a racist. Meanwhile, the United States is still bleeding. And as all of this happened, cities were set on fire in the name of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. Even municipalities, municipalities that were not immediately connected with either of them. Statues were torn down, some deservingly so. Football teams uh, changed their names, deservingly so. Corporations rebranded their products, deservingly so. Open-ended gender expression was being forced into middle America, deservingly so. However, even as all of these changes were being made, some of these changes were not being adopted internally, but being forced by the anarchy of the free market, which adopted intersectionality as a way to diversify branding to a larger consumer base. However, the economic devastation was still not addressed. Neoliberalism threw water onto the electrical fire, then knocked down a bunch of statues and proclaimed, look, we're fixing things, yay! Meanwhile, as the public is clamoring for their leaders to put the fire out, 
and some sense of familiarity in a strange world that has suddenly turned upside down. The liberals say, no, 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 your house needs to be burnt down. We won't rebuild your house. We won't rebuild it. You know, your house, which had air conditioning, heat and plumbing, we're not going to rebuild it. Instead, we will replace your house with an environmentally friendly, germ-free tent. How will most of the people outside the sphere of the left respond to that? Not positive, not positively, I can tell you that much. These are the people that need to be won over if the United States is ever going to implement socialist policies because the liberals are going to do everything but that and then claim such to be victories but hollow ones at that. Often these days there are a lot of people on the American left who claim... Uh, to be Maoist, as claiming to be adherents to the philosophy of Mao Zedong. While they adhere to the aesthetics of Maoism, quoting his red books, subscribing to his third world theory, and attacking the declining first world middle America, while claiming to have a hatred for petty bourgeois landlords, the question that should be asked, does the admiration for Mao's personality cult make one an operational Maoist? I'm going to say... No. Mao Zedong understood something that 99% of American leftists don't understand. No matter how much a people clamor for change, most people are rooted in their traditions, craving stability and familiar familiarity. Now, who is more rooted in tradition than rural Chinese peasants living under the spell of Confucianism, despite their deteriorating conditions? Mao understood that if communism was to be implemented in China as a means to drive out the imperialists, he had to win over the rural, unlearned, conservative Chinese peasantry stuck in bogged, or bogged down in their Confucian thought and not the learned academic scholars and merchants living in the cities. What did Mao do? He would dress the revolution in the clothing of the past by exploiting a 14th century Chinese novel, The Water Margin, which tells of the heroic exploits of Song Jiang and 108 outlaws who banded together in a cause that transcends family ties to stand up to a corrupt monarch. Mao would present his army as the modern iteration of this timeless story as a means to win the conservative peasantry over to the communist cause. Later in the 1960s, when in a power struggle with the rival Lin Pao, who adhered to Confucian philosophy, Mao would appropriate another ancient philosophy, um, another ancient Chinese philosophy called legalism which had utter contempt for Confucianism. Legalists believed in forcefully prescribing laws to establish order in the name of loyalty to the state, as opposed to Confucianism, which focused on the individual's morality, with emphasis on reverence to ancestors through lionization and ceremony. Mao would use legalism to create a frenzy among the youth of China against the older generation. To Mao, who believed in detournament, the past was not to be attacked, but to be a corpse dressed as he saw fit to shape change in the present. Many American leftists, under the guidance of anti-traditionalist liberals preaching new normalism, view the American mythos as evil and backwards, built on slavery, white supremacy, and genocide. And it was. But seem to forget that the American Revolution was not the brainchild of slave owners, but the brainchild of a leftist named Thomas Paine, a man who destroyed who detested royalty, was anti-slavery. All the people who attended his funeral were African-American, by the way, every single one of them. Detested religious superstitions, believed in a form of basic income, believed in women's equality and equal rights for all. Thomas Paine's writings didn't only inspire the American Revolution, but also the French Revolution. After the American Revolution, it is lost on most people today that uh, when the revolution ended... The American patriots wanted to strip the Tories of all their wealth and property and deport them all to Canada. Well, actually, some even voluntarily left uh, for being British loyal loyalists and, uh, um, you know, bowing down to the crown. 
At the heart of both revolutions is anti-monarchy and anti-elitism, which is still ingrained in a middle American culture, despite the sins of its past and despite all the Cold War and Christian fundamentalist brainwashing. You even still see it today, while professional class liberals preaching new normalism drool over the British royals, working class conservatives and libertarians hate the royals. And guess what? So do ideological leftists and Marxists. The 1% is the modern day monarchy and the professional managerial class liberals are the modern day Tories and the libertarians and conservatives are the Tory apologists, even though they blame China for their own problems. Are you putting two and two together yet? Are you? We are living in a time where people are starving for a sense of familiarity and stability. We cannot allow for the conservative and libertarians to continue exploiting the perverse legacy of Thomas Jefferson to, d to justify austerity and limited, limited do-nothing government. Nor can we allow the progressives and anti-liberal and, and liberals to erase the anti-elitism and anti-monarchist sentiments to make justification of rule by the 1% in the name of a distorted progress where more people were economically marginalized than before in the name of new normalism. No, we don't preach new normalism. Instead, we act like operational Maoists and use Thomas Paine to justify our cause in fighting for a better normal that seeks to defy the rule of the 1% and uplifts the 99% uh, who are to be in control of and determine their own destiny. Stop attacking American tradition when American tradition was literally created by a leftist and was later exploited by slave-owning and capitalist opportunists for their own ends. Instead, reclaim that tradition and use it against the imperialist Tories. We don't want a new normal that works for a few. We want a better normal that works for everyone. This is Comrade Pella signing off.